tonight that when we talk about prayer, when we talk about intercession, intercession begins in the ear. We say prayer, we think mouth. We say prayer, we say what shall I say? But tonight, if I understand the word of God and the ways of the spirit, intercession begins in the ear. And I believe tonight that the leadership team, Esther, Shelley, the others, I believe you've been a prototype of that, an example that you have heard from God. And as Jesus said, I do those things. Now it says I only do those things. But he said I do those things that the Father shows me. Hallelujah. Amen. So 2 Kings chapter 4, I don't know how long I'll be back here tonight, but in verse 8, I'll be using the NIV version, and so verse 8 begins almost like what our, our sister Esther already did. She, she took us on a timeline. And verse 8 begins, one day. I loved hearing that I actually, our cell number, if you want to take my cell number down, this is the moment, okay? <laughs> but my cell number is 647. Okay, that first part, do do that part. But the last part, I don't care if you have, know my cell number, I'm just being silly. Okay, but the last part is 8, 7, Seven. 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 That was not coincidental. I stood there and I talked with them at the telephone because there were some dynamic plans for 777. And so I said, let's, let's do eight for new beginnings. And let's do 777. Amen. I actually think we were there that night, Esther. At, at that worship conference at 777. I'm pretty sure we were. So your Bible for 2 Kings 4 and verse 8 says one day. I believe that God is very, very interested in catching the heart's desire of those who name his name. It was in the month of December bridging into this year when all of a sudden on a Sunday morning in high worship, our home church is Lake Mount Worship Center. And, and I thank God for our leadership. I thank God for the sound of heaven in our house. I was listening that moment and we went into a high place of worship and I began to see streams. That's part of the name of this ministry. I saw streams coming down. I got excited. And, and I, I saw them, and they were coming from on high. And I said, Lord, what are those streams? He said, those are my desires. I said, oh, I'm used to talking to you about my desires. And the Lord said, now I'm talking to you about mine. Wow. At that moment, the Lord began to speak to me. I thought it was for that day in that house. But I heard the Lord say, I am, I've come into an hour with my people that I shall begin to release my desires. And I am looking for those who will receive my desires. Places where my desires can land. Come on. And the Lord said, it is when my desires land, then my will is done on earth as it is in heaven. And so I'm thankful for one day One day, Elisha 
So we can just, from this point on, say the anointing. Elisha was carrying the anointing for his generation. He had the mantle for miracles. Yes, he did. He had the cloak. One day, Elisha went to Shunem. And a well-to-do woman was there. Please remember, we just got to look at her, her net worth, okay? There's a well-to-do woman there. She urged him to stay for a meal. I want you to picture this with me. Others, maybe they saw Elisha come to town and they, they looked at each other and said, hey, there goes the anointing. And they all said, okay, there goes the anointing. But not the Shunammite woman. <laughs> I don't know if they had porches or not. But everybody else just opened the Venetian blinds and said, there goes the anointing. The Shunammite woman, she gets out on the porch. She goes out on the porch and she calls out to the anointing and, and says to the anointing, I believe I would like to divinely align with you. Wow. <laughs> That's not what she said. She said, please come to my house and stay for a meal. But in effect, she did say, I wish to divinely align with you. Do you you would enjoy it with me tonight. It was a long time before one day I, I decided to get out the Hebrew dictionary and check out what Shunna means. It means rest. Wow. Yeah, it is wow. So what is happening in that one verse and bridging into just part of another is that the anointing The anointing has been called into a place of rest. How delightful that Winnipeg is with us tonight. God is looking for places in Winnipeg for the anointing to rest. I'm so glad Toronto is in the room. You, my sister, is your middle name Shunem? <laughs> Come to my house. A voice cried out to the anointing. Come, my house, my house. The Bible says he did. And it wasn't just one meal. But the word of God says that whenever he came to that place, he came to her table. Wow. I, I, I kind of picture it this way, that she goes down to Walmart and, and she says, I, I need a few more placemats. Oh, I don't know why you would need more placemats. Is it not just you and your husband at your house? And she said, I just made room for the anointed. That must have been wonderful. The anointing will find the path to the places where the anointing is welcome. Wow. Come on. Yes. Thank you, Lord. So it must have been glorious. They, they, they knew to set out the placemats and, and they could involve themselves. But I don't know how it is yet with you many in this room. You know this. That when you make room for the anointing, <laughs> you know, you give the devil an inch, he'll take a mile. Oh, yeah. mm. You give the Holy Ghost an inch, 
he takes over. Hey, yes. Now, I grant it. If your Bible is open, you're, you're not going to see. And one day, but, but it does talk about that day. So I have to provide you the narrative. Holy Spirit, I'm sure, does not mind. So that morning, she comes down and she's fixing the coffee and the toast is in the toaster. Her husband comes on down to the kitchen. He's got the newspaper. He is, in fact, reading the newspaper. And she said those words. Those words. Those words shake the very heart of every husband in this room. Do you know what those words are? Honey, I've been thinking. <laughs> you know, that has been the preamble to a lot of different things. People have sold their home and bought new houses. There's, there's a good word for every realtor back there in the back corner. I would love to prophesy that your business is about to flood, but I'm not going to do that, brother. I, I promise not to. Honey, I've been thinking. And, and I believe the toast popped up and was never seen. I, 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 I know, I know. She said, I, you know, you know the man of God, every time he comes, he, he comes here for a meal. Let's build a small room on the roof. So I think he began to diagram, you know, men can do that. It was yellow paper, it had squares, maybe it was white paper, I don't know. Anyway, they, he drew it, and, and she's making her list, and he jumps up, and she calls Home Depot, I get a 25% cut after this moment, on increased sales. Anyway, and, and they go down and they get the supplies. I'm not a carpenter, but spiritually tonight, I understand that when you make room for the anointing, that will give way to a desire and a placemat will become a small room on the roof. There are individuals all over this room we're celebrating with the team tonight that you allowed God to cut in to the basic line of your life. Every other house had a flat roof. I can imagine just a few days after that, maybe 10, 15 days, she's out walking the dog and, and every other house is flat and and, and then there's flat. And someone says, hey, did you, are you aggrandizing things for yourself? Or is this a home improvement? Is it more? Are you amassing more? And she said, oh, no. We have made room for the anointing. You've allowed God to cut in to the basic structures of your lives. I'm not a carpenter. I don't know about bearing walls, weight distribution of a second floor. But the anointing, the anointing came. In fact, your Bible says, we made our way to verse 11. One day, don't you love it? 
taught. We're already the only ones around here that have four placemats at our table. We're already the ones that have this change of structure, come on, to make room for God. But one day, the Bible says, Elisha arrived and went to his room. It's called a pronoun. It's called a possessive case pronoun. It's his room. <laughs> have, you, have you ever been in a moment you, you just say to God, no, I know, um, I think I'll just say, I can see my reflection because none of you would have this problem, so I'll preach to her. <laughs> but where you've, it, you've in one of those days, one of those moments, and, and you just say to the Lord, what right, you know, put one hand here on him. What right do you, oh yeah, it is your room, isn't it? Apostle Elaine, they, some of them smiled, most of them had their, held their faces very still. Because I am the only one in here. The anointing. It was not their room anymore. It was his room. His room. The word of God says, Elisha is in that room. He came to his room. He went up there. He lay down. He said to his servant Gehazi in verse 12, Call the Shunammite. So he called her and she stood before him. Elisha said to her, Tell her, You have gone to all this trouble for us. Esther, Shelly, the team. Oops. Tell her you have gone to all this trouble for us now. Would you say the word now with me really loud? Now. What can be done for you? Can we speak on your behalf to the king or the commander of the army? She replied, I have a home among my own people. <laughs> I can't believe that. That's the anointing making the offer. Now, you've gone to all this trouble for us. Now, what can be done for you? Hmm. It's fine, no thank you. Jack, I have to tell the story, I'll, I'll tell it quickly. Oh, we ministered in British Columbia the first hundred years of our life, and, and we would often be into First Nations communities, and there was this one restaurant in Alert Bay. Some of you don't even know where Alert Bay is, but there is an Alert Bay, and a lovely restaurant, and, and it's hard to find a place to eat on that gravel road. And so there we were. And there was a for sale sign in the window. We said, why have you sold? And they said, oh, we bought, we're starting a new business in Whistler. <laughs> and they took out their card and they handed it to Jack and they said, when you come to Whistler, find us there. So several months went by actually, and we drove up to Whistler, up the Sunshine Coast, which is the strangest name for that cloudy drive. <laughs> and we got there and we had this before GPS, as you know. So we're going down and looking. Nancy Green, oh, now Senator. Nancy Green, Olympic Hotel. You know it's an expensive place when you step in the door and it says, the next meals will be served at five o'clock. They don't even need money. They don't sell food during the day. <laughs> so we go in, it's about 3.30. We give them our card. The, 
waiter comes back out and he said the owners are in a meeting and they said thank you for coming. They were open for coffee and dessert. They said anything that you would like. Too bad it wasn't after five o'clock. <laughs> anything you'd like is on the house. Well, we'd already been looking at the menu and, and, and in keeping with what we did in those days, Jack said to them, we would like two coffees, please. And we see that you have chocolate cheesecake. <laughs> and, and they said, Jack, this one said, that will be one piece, please, and two forks. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and I don't know what he did with this leg, but I did the wifey thing. I took my leg underneath the table, and I did my best to find his leg. I don't know where his leg was. And the waiter said, sir, Sir, is that your order? He was shaking his head and he turned and walked away and I said, Jack, don't you, didn't you hear? It's on the house. <laughs> well, I stand before you tonight to let you know it was the best half a piece of chocolate cheesecake I have ever had. It's not so bad if it's the Nazi Green Olympic Hotel in Whistler, BC, and it's on the house. I mean, that's regretful if you say no thank you. But what about when the double portion anointing says now, what can be done for you? The word of God says, if I understand this chapter right, she must have gone back downstairs singing, this is the day, stirring the gravy, thrilled to be serving. But the anointing was restless. I believe tonight if the conversation at my table between Apostle Byron, who had to excuse himself with Apostle Elaine, if, if that conversation is correct, and I believe it is, I want to declare tonight the anointing is restless over Montreal. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I actually believe it tonight yes. Yes. that the anointing is not taking no for an answer. While well, she is downstairs, thrilled with, with her activity with heaven, the anointing is, what can be done for her? What can be done? And your Bible says, he said to Gehazi, call her, don't miss this in your Bible. The Word of God says she came and it tells us where she stood. She stood in the doorway. Did you, did you see that in your Bible? There was the day, my friend, when that doorway wasn't there. <laughs> She stood at the place that was the evidence of the first two days with the anointing. She stood in the doorway and the anointing said to her, I'm not taking no for an answer. 
Now you know the rest of this story. The anointing said to her, you will have a son. And we go, what is your problem? Because I want to know tonight, what's my problem? I suggest to you three things. Number one, she was used to her role. She was very used to what she did in the kingdom. After all, she's the only one in town. Thank God that's not true for Zion House of Prayer. But she's the only one in town entertaining the anointing. Secondly, she's got a little problem with her track record. She, she said, I, I, don't, I don't do babies. I built small rooms on roofs. <laughs> and this is sounding, sounding desperately familiar to some in this room. And I believe the third thing, which is likely the most agonizing, remember that she is well to do. She had a problem, a major problem. She said, I could personally supply and produce day one and day two. I could buy the placemats. I could buy the roast beef. I could personally finance. My involvement with the anointing. But you can't buy Babies. She said, she's well to do. She already knows what it is to invest in the kingdom. But now the anointing is challenging her. And I declare tonight that this is a word for Zion House of Prayer. But I believe it is a word for individuals in this room as well. That the Lord is eager to birth something. Yes. It will be those who are already involved with God, who have day one, and they have day two. But there is a cry of the Spirit that says, I'm ready for the next day. Hallelujah. What do you want to birth? I'm so glad we've got this chapter in our Bibles because God was desiring to birth that which would be a miracle, but that which would ultimately grab the attention of a nation at the highest level in the very court of the king. Keep reading about the Shunammite woman. I would ask us tonight, this time I do have to preach to that lady. I have to ask us tonight, what does God want to birth? All over this room, thank you for your placemats, your roast beef. Thank you for cutting into the structure of your life and providing a place of rest for the anointing. But here's the deal. When you birth something, God's got the miracle, but you have the womb. Next year, at this time, you will hold the child in your hand. Yeah. Hallelujah! Stand with me all over the room, church. I declare over Zion House of Prayer 
Everything God has done is because of what God is going to do. I declare tonight that the Lord is mindful of the investment, of the cost, of the price. He is mindful that you deliberately in obedience set yourself apart from other norms, flat roofs, but you built the small room on the roof. And tonight, the Lord is saying, this time next year. So some have your hands raised, but would you put your hands up like that to receive? Father, I want to thank you tonight for what you desire to birth in a place called Canada. What you desire to birth in a province called Quebec, what you long to bring forth in a place called Montreal. We say tonight, Lord, look upon these hands being offered to you tonight. They are not hands of a novice. They are hands that have already moved and have history with you, O oh God. And now we declare this time next year that which heaven longs to birth shall manifest in Jesus' name. Amen.